I know, some new construction home myths that could jeopardize a lot more than you think when buying a new construction home. It's important to know which ones are true and which ones are not. Make sure you stay until the end because the last one is really important and it's gonna be around for a really long time. What's up y'all? I'm Rachel Haditzas with EXP Realty in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. New homes are fun. I get it. Just like new cars have that new car smell, new homes definitely have a new home smell and it's not just the paint. But if you're planning on buying new construction anytime soon, you definitely need to know about some myths that have been going around. And some myths are rooted in truth or they were once true and just aren't true anymore. So let's take a fresh look at these new home buying myths and see if there's any truth to them. First, let's look at some financial untruths. How about the one that new homes are always more expensive? Lately, I've been seeing that existing homes and new homes are fairly similarly priced if the home has been built within the last 10 years. That's pretty comparable. Now, as we see the market normalize, new construction is going to stay higher while existing homes are inevitably going to come down as interest rates rise. So one reason that an existing home might actually be more expensive than a new home could be the size of the yard. You know, years ago, yard sizes, they were a lot bigger. But as our population grows, the need for more housing continues, yard sizes are unfortunately going to get smaller. So here in Tennessee, for example, you might find an existing home with a half an acre or an acre yard that's every bit as cost every bit as much as a brand new home that's built on a quarter of an acre. And that's all because of the outdoor space. Second, how about that myth that you need 20% down to purchase a home? I see some new home builders that require as little as a 5% down payment. Some home builders only require a small deposit as little as $1,000 and then you only have to come up with whatever your lender requires as far as your down payment. And there are a lot of different loan products. I'm not qualified to go over them, but you can get loans for as little as three and a half percent down. The whole thing behind putting 20% down, it's a good thing if you're getting a conventional loan to have 20% to put down because then you don't have to pay for private mortgage insurance. So it's only gonna lower the amount of your monthly payments. So if you have it, that's great, but it's not a requirement. The next myth is that you can lock your interest rate in at the time that you sign a contract with the builder. Not necessarily, it really depends on how far along they are in the build process. If your home is substantially complete, your lender may lock in your rate. And I'm seeing a lot of rate locks in the early part of 2022 when we're seeing a lot of volatility with interest rates. However, typically, most typically what I've seen of lenders is that they lock the interest rate in about 60 days prior to the completion of the home. Just always remember, that who you choose to finance your home through can be very important and a lot of it just depends on who your lender is. The next myth, and I've seen this in 2022, is that builders are desperate to get rid of houses. Not true at all. The reality is that builders are making a lot of money right now and buyers are still lining up to buy houses. Now it is a good sign that we're seeing more new homes hit the market and sit on the market instead of just being snatched the moment that it hit. It's also a good sign that we're seeing the return of builder incentives like paying part or all of closing costs, for example. Now that usually does come with a stipulation like having to use the builder's lender and title company, but those are still really important incentives to consider if you're purchasing a new construction home. So this isn't a repeat of the 2008 recession. We are not at the point where builders are desperate to get rid of inventory. And I don't know that we'll ever see that point because like I said, our population is growing. There's a continued need for housing. And there's also these corporations that also like to purchase out homes and rent them out to folks like you and me. The next myth is that a new home will be perfect and there won't be anything wrong with it. Definitely not true. The reality is that no home is perfect and it all starts with the ground that it sits on. Obviously the property developer is gonna come in, they're gonna develop the land, but it's gonna continue to shift over time even as you're laying the foundation of that home. There will be wear and tear on the home even while it's being built. The first year of the home, you'll hear from the builder that the home settles. You might see some nail pops or cracks in the drywall, but that's why most typically, most new constructions will come with a one 
10-year cosmetic warranty just because of that settling that occurs in the home. What I recommend with that is to call your builder around month 10 or so and schedule everything so that they can come out all at once because they're probably only going to come out one time. So that's why you want to wait a little bit to, to call them out. And then there's the myth that you can't have your own property inspection. While it's true that you don't have an inspection contingency when you're purchasing a brand new home, you can still hire a third party inspector to come out and tell you about the general condition of the home and they can tell you maintenance items to look out for, especially in that first few years of owning your home. One little tip, if, especially if you're a buyer's agent out there, ask the builder, make sure that they have the utilities on because you would not believe a couple of times it's happened where the builder has not had the utilities working and then the inspector had to come out a second time just to verify that everything was working. The inspectors, they're not allowed to turn utilities on even if it's just as simple as flipping a switch, but it, and definitely make sure the water's on. You know, you wanna make sure that your major systems are working, nothing's leaking, and that's what you are hiring a third party inspector for. As a buyer's agent, I like to have the third party inspection scheduled just prior to the blue tape walk. So the blue tape walk, that's when you walk through and point out any cosmetic defects that the builder will complete or repair, fix prior to closing. But if you've got that third party inspector's report before then, it can make that blue tape walk go through a lot more seamlessly because you already have a lot of items on that list. The next myth is that everything is going to go according to plan. Yes, the builder has a plan, but humans are infallible. People make mistakes. There are supply chain issues. I will be the first to stand up and say that things are going to deviate from what is expected. They usually do, and for a whole lot of reasons too. It could be a property developer, it could be a city inspector, it could be a supply chain issue, it could be a labor issue, it could be the weather, especially here in Tennessee. It's a lot of times it's the weather. There really are a lot of reasons, you know, they halted the construction of the Costco here in Murfreesboro because they discovered there was a Native American burial ground. So, you know, it took months of legislation and hashing that out to where they could continue to build. And so the Costco is there. So what I tell my buyers with new construction, plan for the worst, hope for the best. You want to plan for delays, plan for supply chain shortages, plan for the builder to possibly switch up a supplier in order to maybe meet a deadline of giving you your home. Oh, we had to get the fridge from this other supplier because our normal supplier was gonna be late. So that's why the fridge looks different. And so that could be trying to stay on plan, but having to switch a vendor just so that they can stay on plan. There's gonna be a lot of things that happen and you just really need to be flexible. And the myth is gonna persist throughout that you don't need a realtor to purchase new construction, that the realtor at the model home is your agent, but that's not true. See, the real estate agent that's at the model home, they're the builder's agent. And so their fiduciary duties are to that builder. So remember that the best builders out there, they are going to pay a buyer agent commission. So I don't want to say that it's free. Um, my buyer's agent services are not free, but typically they are paid for by the seller, in this case, a builder. So it's my recommendation that you take advantage of that, whether that's with me or some other fantastic realtor, because if nothing else, you're going to have somebody on your side. If the builder makes you mad, I'm on your side, remember that. You know, having a buyer's agent when you're working new construction, it can help you to sort through the numerous options that are out there. You know, maybe there's a builder that builds in three different communities and you need to kind of weigh the options. Which community do I wanna live in? Or maybe I wanna go to a different builder, you know? Um, help you weigh the pros and cons of each builder instead of thinking that, everyone is the same because they're definitely not. Especially if you've been out looking for new construction lately, having an agent out there to check and see who has availability, that can make your life easier and save you hours upon hours of checking around at different builders only to find out that they're not building or their next phase isn't gonna be developed and ready for building for another year and a half. So not only am I gonna help you sort through the numerous options that are out there, weighing the pros and cons of each, I'm also gonna help you stay on the timeline so that we don't 
um, you know, do something that's not allowed in the contract and for some reason have the builder cancel on us. It can happen and it's really, really heartbreaking when you have your emotions set on purchasing a home and something falls through. So having an agent there, we can help you stay on top of what needs to be done. I can even help you schedule the walks, the inspections. You don't ever have to contact the builder. You know, call your friendly realtor and we will take care of it for you. And I think everyone appreciates having their own rep representation when an issue with the builder arises. No one wants to yell at the builder's agent. Having a buyer's agent to put that emotion to the side and advocate on your behalf is really what's gonna get you what you deserve. As the agent, I can remove myself from that situation when I'm discussing any issues with the builder's agent, but I also sympathize with your situation and do everything that I can to correct any issues. Whether you plan to move to Tennessee or you've been living in Tennessee for a while, I'm sure that you're gonna find something helpful in either of the two videos on your screen right now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next video.